Today is February 13th, Tuesday at 6 p.m. Um, this is the Penfields Parks, Penfield Parks and Recreation Advisory Board meeting. Um, I think we can go ahead and start with our agenda. Um, you do have a, everyone does have a copy of this meeting's agenda. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? No. No. Perfect. Um, I'd like to thank Don Hoyler uh, for one leading and then creating the minutes for the December 12th meeting. Uh, you all should have a copy of that as well. Uh, from looking at the minutes, any edits, any changes, anything that stands out to you? No, seeing no, Thanks. seeing no changes. Um, so we approve the minutes for the December 12th meeting. And once again, thank you, Don, for creating the minutes. Um, so we can jump into the discussion portion. The first part is um, the advisory committee appointments and meeting schedule. Um, I think it'll be helpful if uh, we just kind of introduce ourselves in the order, just so I'm not saying anyone's last name wrongly. Uh, but I am Shri Karthik. I'm the chairman. I'm Don Hoyler, vice chairman and note taker. <laughs> uh, I'm Ben Evenhouse, active member. Uh, Julie Henricks. I'm Steve Van Hall. I'm Andrew Erkvitz from the Recreation Department. I'm Tim Masterton, Parks Department. Linda Teglash, Town Council. Bob and Saldi, I'm the liaison to the Trails Committee. Linda, I think this is your first meeting with us, so we're excited to have you and work with you. Thank you so much for serving our community. Um, I think we'll jump into the Penfield Trails Committee update. Sorry, please take your time. Um, trails committee, um, we did not have a January hike. Um, if you recall the second Saturday of January, it was, there was a high wind warning mm -hmm. and we made the decision the day before to cancel because um, we just didn't feel safe to be out there. Um, since I can't remember the timing, back in December, we did have a very good hike out at Sherwood Field it was mm -hmm. around 20 people, so and that was very well attended. Mm -hmm. um, Tim, I want to thank you for making sure that we did discover a very slippery, unauthorized bridge out at Sherwood Field. Mm -hmm. um, did have someone fall on it. Luckily, no serious injuries. Um, let Tim know, and but well, within a business day, you had it ripped it out because <laughs> it shouldn't have been there. It was removed. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Tim. Um, upcoming hikes. <coughs> Hopefully, weather permitting, we're going to have the town, I don't know what you call it, Andrew, the festival on? The family snow night out event, yes. Mm. So a week, a week from Friday night, the trails committee will be doing guided hikes at 6.30, 7, and 7.30, a bunch of 20-minute hikes at Harris Wayland. Um, with, we'll have glow sticks mm. up on the trees. Um, so these are just short little hikes. We'll do 20 minutes, come back, regroup, do because there's usually three different loops we can take, so mm -hmm. hopefully we'll have the weather to uh, make that event happen. Is that Actually, more fun in the snow. Is it contingent on snow, or would we do the hikes anyway if I the think, weather's? I think the one year that we canceled due to weather was we actually got snow for the event itself to do the sledding yeah. and, and the snowshoeing and things, but um, the one year we did it, we had to cancel because it was too icy for the trails. But I think if we don't get enough snow and we, we can go on the trails, I think we would still do the, mm -hmm. the trail walk and the hike itself, uh, just not the sledding ev event if we don't have enough so snow. Where but else do you have, like, food tent or a fire? We usually thing? would, yeah, we'd have a fire. We can still do that. Do? Uh, the rec okay. department usually just had music and hot cocoa and stuff like that. So we could still okay. provide that just for the hike only. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously no snow, no sledding. Be honest, I think if you're not having the sledding and the other stuff, I'm not sure I would bother with the, the hike. The, the hikes are pretty; they're they're fun, but they're not. Sure. I'm not sure it's worth the effort. Is my take? Yeah, okay. we we can make that decision. I mean, moonlit. It's like our one moonlit hike. No, uh, but if you're going to be doing the other things, that's fine. I just don't yeah. want. I don't want you to think you have to do it. Yeah. It's just because well, we have, we have another hike at Harris Whale, and sometime later in the year, so it's. 
Yeah, well, that, that one we usually post probably a day or two before, just with weather, you never know. There's been mm -hmm. a year where it was green on Wednesday, and then it dumped snow <laughs> Thursday, and we were so thankful. Uh, sorry to all the um, snow plows and, and people that do our parks that were wishing for snow that day. But um, So, yeah, it'll probably uh, be a pretty late, close to the event date when we make that decision, but we'll post it on our social media, stuff like that. And our March guided hike is... Um, second Saturday of March here at the Town Hall Park, Veterans Park. Um, so, and that should be much better than last year's hike here, which was during the summer and very mosquito-y. So I'm not, count, I'm not looking forward to expecting to see this this year. So. Don, can you think of anything else? From I think we could, there were two action items for the trials committee that mm -hmm. we took action on, so we could talk about them now. Mm -hmm. right. um, the first one had to do with kiosks. And so the trials committee at the December meeting took the, uh, accepted the action to define what the kiosks would, you know, standard set of information, park rules, park map, and then any, you know, probably park specific, but, but define, you know, what each template, uh, a template for each kiosk size, because they're not all the same size. So we started that at our trails committee meeting um, last week. And so we'll see that through. So that's that's underway, right? And the other one was the uh, Wegman's passport hit the trail. Mm -hmm. So we accepted the action to go through and, and review each of the parks in that passport and make sure the information is accurate, current, and updated. And so we've started that as well. A question for you, Tim, on that one. Mm -hmm. If we want to, at Shadow Pines, have one of the Wegman's little rubbing things, is that something that you have? I don't even know what. Don't you have some of those little? Yep, we so do have little we, ones. We order those through Penfield Trophies. Okay. Um, I, I think the the discussions that we've had before about trails. I, I think back to when we actually walked it as a trails committee um, with disc golf when that was first being established a couple of years ago. Um, with all the different moving parts that are still at Shadow Pines um, moving forward, I think the thought was that we wouldn't come up with a necessarily per permanent or dedicated trail system. Obviously, the, the walking paths are there. People are walking them. There's, there's foot trails that, that Tim started to mow and now are definitely established. Um, I, I don't, it might be a little too early to have the rub and you know a dedicated trail there unless we I, I'm all for like a walking path that maybe we could follow um, we could do that to start but the thought was wait until you know these other larger things get established and then we put that permanent trail system in there for for everyone I know that it would mess up the book if you guys are looking to update the Wegmans booklet yes um, I know there's some properties and parks that we have that have the rubbing right on the kiosk so that would get them to the park, but then there are some rubbings that are like within. I don't know if that would be an option to having it, just to start having it on, like just near the parking lot, just to get people there to okay. do the rubbing. But then, like Andy said, later on, once we get the established trails, naming them, that kind of thing, then we can put it out in the, but then that would include updating the booklet. Yeah. So I it, guess it it's- It should wait, it should wait okay. until we have, in my opinion, it should wait until we have the development done and the paths defined and maps made that show the paths. Okay. But I'd, I'd like to say, too, with, with some of the larger things that are happening there, the pickleball, you know, Clark House, uh, of course there's always going to be potential things, but uh, a lot of the things that the original moratorium committee came up with, you know, some of those plans are at least moving forward. So I, I would recommend to the Trails Committee that maybe the time would be now to start coming up with ideas for that, you know, the, the pickleball, um, at least the markings for where that that area would be um in a, in a, doesn't have so to a be trail right through there. the pickleball court <laughs> right <laughs> but uh but but i i would say we can start to look at other areas too you know with the bike plan that's going in the back just looking at you know i think one thing that we drive home and we're trying to get is that um, how are we connecting different points and um, i think shadow pines is going to be a, a really integral piece to uh, connecting to different parks and areas within the town because it is such a large green space. Um, but we can start to look at that um, bike paths, walk paths that connect out to uh, major roads, things like that. I think that's all I have from Trails Committee. Perfect. Thank you both. I just had one thing. Sorry. Go for it. Not to 
step on that, but with the start of the season, just a reminder that if people want to do hikes, mm -hmm. you can register online at penfieldrec.org. There's a little tab. Uh, you can register for all of them at this point. They're all posted up there <coughs> for each of our hikes. If you're interested in getting that information, it's online, but we also have little flyers that um, I know the trail committee uses little bookmarks, so those mm -hmm. are available at the rec department as well. But just yeah. wanted We to also hand those out at the hikes. We highly encourage people to register, but it's absolutely not required. Mm -hmm. The advantage is, similar to what happened a couple weeks ago, if you register ahead of time and we cancel, you get a call. To yeah. And they wait for you, too, mm. <laughs> potentially. That's good yeah, enough. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. We do not wait. <laughs> <laughs> a little. But one or two minutes, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the official statement, one or two minutes. Um, Penfield Parks update. Parks update. I know we, since we didn't have the meeting last week, I'm trying to remember what we did slash uh, mm -hmm. December, January. Um, we were working on a lot of that, uh, the ditch at Shadow Pines along Whalen Road, mm -hmm. filling in that ditch. Um, it'll be easier ma mowing maintenance on our end, mm -hmm. and it just looks better, safer. There's no ditch there, so in case anything happens. Um, we regraded a lot of our stone parking lots with a new uh, machine that we had, a Harley rake that attaches to our bobcat, um, got rid of a lot of the potholes in a lot of our mm -hmm. stone parking lots. They would be like LaSalle's Landing, Greenwood, um, the 250 Access Trail, so we shored up a, a, a lot of those. Um, one of the big projects that we did, not projects, but we did chainsaw training for DPW mm -hmm. up at Upper Harris Whalen. We had a lot of new employees come in. Um, we had a lot of dead, dead trees that were right next to trails. So that was a great opportunity to teach these, uh, the new employees how to fell a tree properly, safely communication mm -hmm. and, uh, things like that. So, um, that was a really good job. Uh, it was done by, in, it was in-house done by Jason Dallas and Todd MacArthur of our highway group mm -hmm. and, uh, very expert, uh, chainsaw handlers. And they did a great job teaching our employees. That's pretty much Perfect. a Thank little you. of it. Thank you so much. Uh, recreation updates? Well, can, I'm sorry. Oh, go for it. Yep. Um, is there any update on the, the bridge? Uh, as, as far as I know, there's no new update mm -hmm. as of right now. Okay. And one other question I had. So there was an award, a grant to for LaSalle's Landing, right? 624000 mm -hmm. from the state DEC, I believe. And the town has to put up some money in kind, right? Um, we have two, I think, requests for, so that includes, the original plan includes a pavilion and a bathroom, right? And so there's requests have come in from community for a bird watching platform mm -hmm. and a kayak launch. So I don't know, and it's just a question, if there's any room in that funding or if the town you know, if, if those things could be included in this or if they would go into the master plan as recommendations for the future. The, the, the plan from, from what I know is, is we're putting that in the master plan for sure with that feedback. Um, the, in terms of the funding, if, if I believe if we're way under, uh, which typically never happens, <laughs> uh, especially with construction costs the way they are, it would certainly get looked at. But I, I know okay. that the kayak... Um, piece was not included in, in the grant uh, when they put the proposal okay. together. So, so the grant that 624 with the, whatever the town is matching, that was based on estimates to to do the pavilion in the bathroom. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. And um, so yeah, the, definitely the bird watching platform and the kayak launch can be added to the master plan, so we can look mm -hmm. forward to that and look for funds in the future saying and I know that's the perfect opportunity to put it in the master plan so we can have opportunities to okay. um, do that kind and of I definitely think with with the bathroom being done you know the thought is is to you know it's start it's starting to evolve down there we we've seen more people using that area for mm -hmm. fishing kayaking things like that um, and I I know over the years we have heard you know that the kayak launch needed Help and things like that. So I think these permanent bathrooms are really going to help get uh, kind of to that next level and, and have more people look at needing to use that kayak launch, which would precipitate us to uh, 
possibly put some funds and or work into that area, but obviously it'll be in the master plan. We can look at it. Okay. And just going back to the Channing Philbrook Trail Bridge, are you familiar with that issue? Yes. Okay. Yes. Just want to make sure that, yeah, because that's <laughs> going to be expensive to fix, but it needs to get fixed. I know that it's being looked at yes, for it's being this looked year. At, and I, I don't think there was any more updates as far as, um, I forget which company we're going through, MRB yeah. maybe, something like that. They're actually out there doing test holes, that kind of thing. Okay. So not that we're super far along, but they're calling to DC, how invasive we can get with the heliocoils that we have to drill, that kind of thing. So it's not... I wouldn't um, say it's a standstill at this right. point. It's just moving forward, working with the DEC and these other groups. But I, I believe the plan is is for 2024 to, mm -hmm. um, as long as we have the funding and it gets approved, that the work will happen. Anything else for our Parks Department? Good. Recreation. Of Thank you. Um, so for winter-spring 2024 programming, um, we're kicking off. We're already in February, and um, I'm happy to report that uh, when we're looking at, you know, we can get into the weeds of our program numbers and things like that, but um, usually just looking at expense and revenue at this point uh, kind of shows where we're at in the year. And we're already at 50% of our uh, proposed revenue. So we're only two months in and we're already at 50%. So uh, I just, you know, cannot thank uh, and really just appreciate our recreation staff for, for all that they do. It, it shows in the programming that we have. Um, we do have our summer soccer and our summer camp, which is a, a large part of our budget. So obviously it's not just January and February programming. Um, it is kind of, we are looking to go halfway through the year, looking at a lot of the things that we do offer, but being at 50% already uh, for our proposed revenue is, is wonderful. And we're way ahead of where we were last year. So. Again, just kudos to our rec staff for all the programs that they fit into the building and, and work with kind of outside organizations for that. Um, for upcoming events, like we, we discussed, we have the family snow night out, uh, weather pending um, two Fridays from now. Um, we'll post on our social media and website um, the status of, if it is canceled. If the, nothing's posted, then mm -hmm. it is on. Uh, if at least the sledding portion is canceled, we would post that and put something on there about the hikes if they're still on. Uh, but feel free to contact the rec department at any time and, and we can respond. Uh, and then really the next uh, event after that is something that we, we don't do every year. So it's new and we're planning for the last two years for the total eclipse in Penfield. Mm -hmm. um, the town is planning to have an event at Harris Whalen Park really a, a large viewing party uh, with arts and crafts. Um, we'll have music, we'll potentially have some um, blow ups, things like that. Um, but ultimately just a large space and parking for uh, people to come and view. Certainly there are other parks that are open, Shadow Pines, Rawfus, Veterans mm -hmm. Memorial here where people can go to the parks and, and utilize them. Uh, I think the biggest key that we're trying to put out there is um, don't look at the sun without the glasses. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you have those. We will have some available at the event and the Penfield Library will be giving them away. I know the school district is doing the same thing, um, but feel free to reach out the library um, up until the day of the event as I know that they will be giving them away. Um, uh, but really that other big piece is it's April and I think we're all thinking blue skies and, mm -hmm. and sunny and we're gonna be out there in shorts and shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, shirts and things like that. So uh, just dress appropriately if you come, do come out to the event, um, but also from our parks department, um, our fields, whether they're athletic fields or not, uh, if it's muddy, if it's wet, um, that's kind of the worst time of the year to have people going out there uh, and putting footprints uh, into fields and things like that. I know we recently <laughs> had some damage to a baseball field that um, is quite expensive. But um, really just use your best judgment when mm -hmm. it comes out to that. We're going to have the upper parking lot and the lower parking lot at Harris Whalen available for viewing. So mm -hmm. there will be spots off grass, but please stay off our athletic fields uh, on April 8th if it's wet. 
Um, hopefully in a perfect world, it's sunny and, and everything's great and our sports teams can get out there even in April. Uh, but typically, uh, it's usually May uh, once it's dry enough for a lot of our athletic fields to be ready. So uh, just appreciate the help and communication for everyone to uh, just be mindful of, uh, of the time of the year to be out on those sports fields. Um, so looking at other events, we're planning our summer 2024 concert series, which is located here at the amphitheater behind us. Um, it's every Tuesday starting in June, goes all the way to the middle of August. We have three kids concerts slash family concerts that we sprinkle in. Uh, we have the town food cart at all of them. Uh, at the kids concerts, we give away free books. Uh, we have balloons, face painting, the fire truck usually comes, so um, really just check it out. It'll be in our summer brochure and on our events page, um, but we're looking forward to really summer already. Um, another piece that kind of connects to parks is, again, back to the sports fields, but um, we've been recently meeting and doing our preseason meetings with our sport groups, the lacrosse, the soccers, uh, little league, softball, stuff like that. Um, and I definitely want to mention that we've got three brand new fields at Rafis Park that are coming online this year that we're there very, very, very thankful for. Um, it's helping us potentially rest some fields that we haven't in, in decades. Um, so that's really helping the community for us to offset our athletic fields and make them a little bit better and nicer for everyone to use. Uh, but at the same time, um, there's going to be more parking at Rafis Park. Uh, but because we have three more fields there and we have a very popular um, playground there, uh, we have a box turf, um, really just putting out there that please make sure you're utilizing all of the parking at Rafis Park and not parking on the grass uh, and things like that. Uh, we understand it's going to be busier with three fields, but we're working on mitigating it uh, before. But please just make sure you're not parking on the grass and, and digging that up because I know that'll be a something we're trying to work with our sport groups to schedule appropriately so not all eight of our fields have teams on them at, at once but um, that's kind of the the nice bright spot of our fields this year is we're, we're gaining those three that we've been waiting for for a couple of years um, and that's all i've got for penfield rec question andrew for the april eclipse events um i'm sure you you might already have this uh mm -hmm. on your radar you might already be go you might already have a plan to do this but mm -hmm. if you could have some social media posting about like the do's and don'ts yep. i think there's so much excitement about uh everything in april that uh mm -hmm. i know that i know folks are kind of coming in to rochester to kind of witness yeah. this so anything that you and your team i mean if you don't have the bandwidth i'm happy to help you and support yep. making this um but any like kind of any guidance any visual uh you know aids that you can give folks on like what to do what not to do mm -hmm. i think that'll be really helpful and i think it'll be helpful i mean i i'm sure like i share things from the town page all the time on facebook so i know folks will be able to leverage that yep um so uh, with this being such a large event and like mm -hmm. i said you know planning for the last couple of years and i'm sure people have been planning mm -hmm. even more for that um we've met uh, as a town and, and other municipalities around and school districts um, we've met with the local zone a sheriffs mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the communication i think you're speaking to mm -hmm. the do's and don'ts you know what to look out for we're r really from our end mm -hmm. is we're going to take whatever the sheriffs are Perfect. posting out for the county mm -hmm. so it's kind of one clear message um, and we're all kind of saying the same thing um, but i would expect that really mm -hmm. in the upcoming month or so as mm -hmm. we get closer to april we're going to start pushing a lot of that stuff out so a lot of our stuff that you're sharing sure uh, we're really just going to be directly sharing so it's all one message but mm -hmm. Uh, I recommend um, if you're interested in anything Eclipse, um, Rochester is a hub at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. Check out uh, a lot of the county information, the Museum and Science Center. They've got everything you need to know. Uh, and they also post about which, what towns are, are doing things as well. So our event's on there. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions for the recreation team? I'm seeing none. Um, the 2024 Parks and Recreation Master Plan Update Committee. Yeah, so not to take over and, and, and talk the entire time. <laughs> um, but we, we had our first community input session for our Parks and Recreation Master Plan Update, and that was at the Community Center on January 31st. I thought it was very well attended. 
Um, we had three different presentations, one just being general, this is what the master plan process is. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, we've talked about it here with this committee, but ultimately, uh, it's, a, it's our five-year plan and even further than five years to say, hey, what direction should the Recreation Department take uh, and our Parks Department? Uh, and it's really just a great opportunity to get community input um, and a reason to kind of say, hey, let's, let's take a really broad look at, at what's going on and what could be done. Um, so really happy and thankful for the, the turnout that we had. Our second presentation was, oh, go, go ahead. Our, our second presentation was, um, with our master plan, um, we've had for many of our previous master plans uh, a discussion of a need of a community center or a rec center, uh, whether it be new or renovated. Um, it was always kind of just a paragraph in our master plan and mm -hmm. um, uh, the board, thankfully, uh, and the previous supervisor um, supported, since we aren't going out for a consultant for our master plan, um, we consulted a rec center study. Um, so our second presentation was on that. Again, it is, it is not very detailed at this point. It's very high level, uh, concept, floor plans, things like that, but really just trying to get and take a couple steps forward to say, you know, what would the community be interested in? What could it look like? And, and really at the end of the day too, what would the cost be right now? Um, and again, none of these plans are going to the board for approval. Um, it's really nice that we're able to wrap this up in the master plan. So a large part of our master plan is going to be that rec center study as one of our main dimensions is an indoor facility. Uh, and then the last presentation um, was from Further Trail Services, um, the Shadow Pines Moratorium Committee um, in their original plan um, had out there that on the south side of the property there would be some mountain bike trails and things like that. So the town is taking that next step uh, to work with further trails to come out and really just, again, get community input about what trails could be, uh, what the community is looking for. I know that we've had some site walks, um, and I think I'll, I'll look to Ben, uh, who's been our resident liaison of our Parks and Rec Advisory Board uh, for this project. I know he did a site walk so he can speak a little bit more to the project. Yeah, yeah. Um, so a, a lot of it echoes what Further Trails presented at that input meeting, um, but it was, it was good to get some visuals on it as well. And, and some of those points really were really drove home or it, there's, a, there's a bunch of them. Um, really <coughs> safe, sustainable trails. Um, and to do that, they're, they're really purpose built. Um, so it's, it's keeping in mind the users, whether it's, it's a shared use or, or a purpose built trail for, for mountain bikers or walkers. Or, um, and it, it's, um, it's designed for that. So, you know, it takes things like um, points of interest into account. It takes things like grade into account because it's the focus, even even in mountain biking, isn't speed, speed, speed all the time. It, it's controlled uh, and it's controlled environment. So that that's all taken taken into account. Um, and, and in that that same that same token, it's accessible. So um, it's accessible to the community. It complements what's already out there. Um, so. So that could mean uh, mainly focused on beginners or leisure or, or, or that kind of thing. There could be parts for progression uh, in there um, for someone who, who wants a little bit more. Um, and, and really, it, it sounds like the, the plan is going to pr be presented with, with options or phases. And, and that can, can vary from simple to ambitious. And um, when you start to get towards the ambitious end, it could really make it a, a destination for neighboring towns, neighboring, um, and as a shared use type, type area. So it could bring bikers in, it could bring other, other walkers in from other towns to, to check it out and um, you know, enjoy the park as a whole. So, um, it, it was overall, it was a very good experience. I, I got a, a lot of confidence in further trails. Um, I'm excited to see what, what they have coming. 
Um, I know that there's a survey out as far as those, those trails um, for, for community input. I know there's been a lot of good feedback already. Um, I did try to also reach out to some other user groups, um, Grok, the Rochester Accessible Adventures, Roots, which is a, like a, a kids um, type mountain bike community and even reached out to some other towns and, and we had another town come to that um, the input meeting where where projects like this were put into place and it, and were successful so so we're trying to get some feelers out on that end as well awesome thank you Ben yeah I think yeah definitely agree with a lot of what what you said and glad to hear that the site walks are are growing out to to different members of the community so if people are interested in site walks reach out to the rec department i know adam from further trails um, certainly has been open to having those mm -hmm. obviously it depends on their schedule and, and his schedule but uh, if you're interested uh, reach out to the rec department email which is recreation at penfield.org um, and speaking to what ben mentioned um, all of those presentations are available. Um, the entire presentation was videotaped by PCTV staff who are videotaping uh, this meeting right now, so thank you to them. They have that available on the town's website if you go to projects of community interest. Um, the Parks and Rec master plan should be the number one thing um, up on the town area, and under that explains you know the majority of the master plan process it has previous master plans attached there it has the um, plan from further all of their slides so you can see it a little bit more in depth it also has the rec center study uh, so really anything that we're talking about right here with the master plan if you need more information um, head to the town's uh, website and check it out um, that next piece is community input survey uh, the bike one has been out for a couple weeks now um, and like Ben said that's gone to a lot of the bike groups and things like that the town just completed and, and wrapped up our master plan survey uh, today and we posted it on our social media it's gonna be on the town's website that same area with the master plan um, right now it's 30 questions it should take anywhere from five to ten minutes uh, but I can't stress enough um, this is really what makes our master plan uh, work is this community input survey is in many, as many residents and as many people as possible giving their opinions and we as a committee will gather that up put some narratives into the master plan but really this is the the bulk of what the master plan is and uh, I can't thank you know Don who's on uh, the master plan um, update committee and the rest of the group um, I, I think everyone's worked really well, come up with some great new questions compared to our previous master plans that hopefully um, just start different discussions just off those. But um, please, 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 um, if you're a community member, share that community uh, mm -hmm. input survey. Uh, we're going to have both of those open until probably the end of March. Uh, so please don't wait. Uh, sooner rather than later, we're looking at the data. Um, at all of our meetings that we have for the update uh, committee um, but if you didn't make the first meeting I know further trails and the rec center study are going to have a little bit more information that was presented um, that first community input on January 31st we do have a second one scheduled for Saturday February 24th um, and it's going to be at the community center and that'll be from 12 to 2 it'll be the same format that we had three different presentations um, we will have laptops, some tablets there for people who want to take the survey because it is online. Um, so if you don't have that access and, and you're looking to, to do the survey, uh, come on the 24th from 12 to 2 and we'll have some, uh, some access for you for that. Uh, but also some more information on the rec center study. I believe they're hoping to have a little bit more visuals. Uh, and I believe the trail plan might even have some initial phases to what Ben was speaking of uh, certainly not the whole project but uh, but a little bit more in depth to after hearing about a month's worth of feedback so again I can't thank uh, the committee uh, town board this committee too. Uh, kind of the next steps of the master plan will be um, we'll meet in the in the next month and then once kind of March end of March April uh, our committee will start to 
get those first drafts going and the plan is, is for this committee to provide as much input as possible um, on those first couple drafts. Um, once it's approved by the committee and this group, then it'll go up to town board most likely uh, May, June um, uh, for their input and or approval. So uh, excited to hopefully get that done before July, uh, hopefully done before June. But mm -hmm. again, the more input and the more work that we have to do for it, really just the more opportunities that we have for the future to look at uh, what we're doing for Parks and Rec. So. Sorry for my long spiel about all that stuff. I got a quick question about that. I went to the first <coughs> uh, One thing that I really uh, liked was the way in which they had the community feedback to the different trail options and the visual uh, representations of what those trails look like. You probably get more out of it by seeing it that way than you would mm -hmm. maybe in the survey. Mm -hmm. So I'd urge people to really attend this session to be able to see what this is all about and have some direct input. And it probably helps the guys from further figure out, really get more specific as to what the, uh, what goes into this? Yep. So I thought that was that was an excellent part of mm -hmm. the session. That was very helpful. Yeah. Is the bike survey available somewhere? Yeah. I mean, so how, how do you access that? We po when we post the only reason it hadn't gone out to the uh, Penfield public through our social media was me saying wait for the master plan so we can send both surveys mm -hmm. out together to not confuse oh, okay. people. Okay, so that'll be posted. So yeah, I apologize. I didn't mention it. The master plan survey and the Shadow Pines. Uh, bike project went out through our social and will be on our website um, but technically the bike survey has been out there for a couple right. weeks just it wasn't shared by us because we wanted to wait mm -hmm. I'm wondering in terms of promoting the survey there is a Penfield neighbors Facebook page with over 10,000 people should try to get that out rec department already posted to it today okay yep <laughs> <laughs> we we try not to go on that too often to uh, go into the weeds of social media, but uh, it is a helpful thing to get mm -hmm. to get word out there. So yes, thank you. So any shares and and likes and things like that are are appreciated. I'd also encourage. I mean, if not the town officially sharing that page, I mean, I'm not saying members of this committee, but you know, if you feel inclined, but other folks that do follow the town's updates, uh, if you can share it in other spaces, I definitely. Um, I've had extensive conversations with Andrew about the power of social media and the networks we have. So, but I do have a question for you. So, does the town normally publish the survey summaries or like results? Uh, in yep. some way? Okay. So all all the results. Mm -hmm. So our previous master plan did a the, a similar survey using the Survey Monkey online, mm -hmm. and I think we had twenty ish mm -hmm. um, questions, and all of that data is captured and printed into our master plan perfect um, so we're planning on having the same thing for this okay. uh, I think out of the 30 questions maybe 10 of them were consistent or maybe worded a little different so we can kind of compare the previous master plan questions nice. uh, just ones that we thought were valuable but again a lot of our, our questions uh, kind of came from looking at the last master plan and mm -hmm. going to the first community input because uh, there we asked four or five questions, mm -hmm. and that kind of spurred some of our conversations for, for the questions that we came up with. And that's why it kind of took a little bit longer, sorry. No, yeah, it's wonderful, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for the Master Plan Update Committee? Okay, I'm seeing none. I'll move to the Clark Road Barn Committee Update. Um, so I have, a few things to share about Andrew, Tim, and Linda. If there's anything, any additional context you can provide, please let me know. Uh, but based on our December update, I did let everyone know that um, before the committee moved forward and worked with any hypotheticals about you know what we could do with the barn, it was really important to establish what state the barn was in. So the town put out an RFP, a request for proposals for you know local companies. Uh, to help out with that assessment, so kind of do a conditions assessment. Um, and I will say Katie Ivers, who leads the Clark Road Barn Committee, uh, did some targeted outreach to local organizations that had done similar work or had worked with the town uh, just to get the word out. But we only got one submission to the RFP uh, from, uh, I believe, Torcha. I might be pronouncing their name wrongly. but. Um, it was not the outcome the committee wanted. I think we expected maybe a little bit more, uh, you know, type of an engagement for the RFP. But uh, I think the point that is a little bit challenging is that the one proposal that we have received is very nice. Uh, but this organization, this company, 
is only going to do a visual inspection of the barn, which uh, some of the committee members are not too happy with. Uh, they are looking for something uh, more, I would say, more active, and uh, so something more than just a visual uh, inspection. They want someone to enter the barn and do an inspection, um, which there's been a lot of conversation around just like the state of the barn and whether it's safe to do that. So um, there's been some discussion, and so uh, the committee has compiled a few questions for this company, and uh, I believe we're waiting to hear back from them, but that's where that stands. There is uh, currently no active uh, meeting or anything scheduled. I think we're just kind of in this holding pattern um, as we try to balance like what the committee wants and right, like what, uh, what type of response we're getting because with only one proposal, we're kind of limited. And, uh, you know, the I don't want to say that the state of the barn is deteriorating, but in a way, yes, it is kind of exposed to the elements. It is uh, old, and so uh, we're trying to kind of play this game as strategically as possible. So hopefully uh, next month I should have more of an update for this for this team. But anything I missed out? No, no I, I think you said it very well. Okay. Uh, just patiently waiting and trying to, um, yeah, if we could get in there and it was safe, I think that would be the option. But I think ultimately uh, there's been some, some issues over the last couple seasons that have Mm -hmm. created more you know the fencing that went up and, mm -hmm. and things like that where it's just not in good shape so yeah um, yeah we'll see what happens sounds good Perfect. Um, any other business that we didn't get to talk about that folks would like to discuss Perfect. Um, this is our first meeting for 2024 so I do want to say Andrew and Tim I just want to thank your teams uh, on behalf of this committee uh, I know that the feeling is pretty consensual, like across the board. We want to thank you and your teams for all the work that you did yep. last year and all the work that you'll do this year. And we're very excited to support everything that's going to happen. Thank you. Um, here, here. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of the health items, uh, the Trails Committee did get to discuss uh, C and D. Um, Andrew, I'll turn it over to you and Tim for A and B. Yeah, I mean, really, um, the, the town easement from Channing, I don't have um, too much updates from what I had mentioned before. Um, the parcel that is owned by the town uh, is leased out to General's Farm Market for farmland. Um, I'm waiting to hear back when that lease runs up, um, but certainly it didn't sound like we, even if the lease is still active, like we couldn't have a discussion um, being that that is, you know, one of those main connecting points for what we talk about, you know, following the creek to get to around Equate Bay all the mm -hmm. way down to as far as you can go. So I think that's kind of that missing key piece that we're looking at. Um, so I think really it's just working with Gentles and having that conversation. Um, I, I don't know when that will take place, um, but that's kind of on the radar for myself and the engineers and planning department. Yeah, I think my, my recommendation would be to close close this and we'll track it through the master plan we'll put that okay. in mm -hmm. the certainly connectivity area or whatever and note it there okay I don't feel like we need to talk about it in this meeting every month <laughs> yeah yeah I think like I said it's it's key it yeah. definitely will be in the no, master plan because no, no, that's, that's you know our big push to connect all of our parks and trails but yeah. um, I know the same <coughs> thing with uh, B I'd like to do the same thing there's mm -hmm. certain things that we can add to the master plan like the non plumb toilets that were brought mm -hmm. to us by Steve, um, they look very fascinating, but that's something that we would have to add yep. to the master plan, that kind of thing. Sure. Um, benches, we're working with Boy Scouts right now, and then some people with the uh, disc golf club, they made some too, so we're working on getting those back out onto the course, the exposed wires. That's something that our parks department can handle once the uh, um, weather turns. Mm -hmm repainting the parking lot. I've had a conversation with our director, Eric Tate, about adding that to the list of stuff to get repainted this year. And then oh, signage for um, Whalen Road. That would I would suggest that be moved to the master plan section too. That's fine. I agree. I guess I want to add a couple of things related to disc golf. There's uh, been a couple of individuals that have gone out of their way to do some things for winter play. Uh, mm -hmm. Made sure that there's snow shovels out there mm -hmm. for the players mm -hmm. to shovel off the tees. Uh, John <coughs> Kelly, a Penfield resident, took care of that. And then uh, Dave Rafa was the guy that uh, 
put more benches out there than we even expected were going to show up. So well, we've right. talked to him about making sure that the uh, that the town um, is aware of those things. Um, one thing too that I had sent an email out to the committee mm -hmm. before our last committee meeting uh, that got canceled. But I think it's really uh, very cool for the town to be aware of the, the statistics related to the discourse uh, from uh, an application that the players use called UDISC, which keeps track of all of their playtime. Um, when they compiled those numbers, it turned out that in 2023 it was the number one played course in New York State, which I think is really very cool. Um, it was number two in the United States for new courses that opened up in terms of the amount of play. And it was number 29 overall in the U.S. for play in general out of all the courses, especially some of the major established courses. And um, it's, it's, it gets played a lot, as Tim knows. He's, he's and, there. And, and if you look on the app, the UDISC <coughs> app, you can, like, zoom out of the United States and you can see all the courses. Mm -hmm. So there's hundreds of them. So mm -hmm. if we're number 29 or 29, 29 yes. that's impressive. Mm -hmm. Very impressive. And it just gets better and better. The people that come out to play this course show up. Um, uh, frequently and then bring their friend so it's getting a great reputation and it's uh, one of the coolest things about this course compared to other courses is the multiple tea sets that are out there so that uh, you know the starting players have a um, uh, much better opportunity to uh, score well <laughs> as opposed to having to play from some of the longer tees and then you've got guys that have uh, played there forever so kudos to the town I say that almost every meeting I think for the great work that Tim and his team does with that uh, but it's reflected in the play statistics. And I think Steve too wasn't it out of, didn't it show, uh, like the how many players came from out of the area and yes. the country? That was a piece mm -hmm. too that yep. I remember seeing we out of that data being that like, wow, I can't believe that many people, yep. you know, countries, mm -hmm. states are coming to to participate and play. Well, you know, you know that the course, so it's great. or the disc community is kind of tight. People they share information and they all know each other, so the word gets out pretty quickly. So disc players from all around the country who are pretty serious, well, uh, check out the course. So I think that uh, there's some very interesting opportunities to come, and I know that the, the guys that are involved with the disc, uh, the disc course that have worked with the town mm -hmm. uh, have got a lot of plans. So good. Um, good. It's, good. It's, it's great. And uh, as a disc player, I love having the course uh, <laughs> less than two miles from my house. It's excellent. Are they yeah. planning anything for the Eclipse where they're all having a tournament uh, and they it. So uh, <laughs> I haven't heard anything. <laughs> there, um, there is sense. already uh, yeah. talk of having an eclipse-based okay. tournament there for that cool. day. <laughs> so, at, um, yeah, that's a, I don't yeah. think anything has been formally set up mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there's been a lot of talk of it on the disc, uh, the disc Facebook group. Yeah, that would be great because we've we've talked about you know, uh, just uh, the amount of people that are projected to come in whether they all come to Penfield or they mm -hmm. you know there's Brockport has a huge sure. area the county obviously is doing a lot and and other municipalities but um, you know we're talking about it we're having the event at Harris Whalen but at really any park uh, is accessible and you can check it out but it'd be nice to have a tournament like that almost to kind of monitor the area as well because uh, we only have so many staff and security and things like that to be around as uh, as you will find some of the data shows uh, when it gets dark uh, animals get a little bit different and humans do too so hopefully it's, <laughs> it's not like a Michael Jackson thriller or anything but um, yeah, but hopefully everybody handles it appropriately and our parks uh, mm. don't get damaged or anything like that it's only a few minutes yeah <laughs> 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 it's gonna be it's gonna be a lifetime yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it, it's We're going to have PTSD really cool. from this, but yeah. Um, <laughs> but I do want to say, Steve, I appreciate when you bring data to the space because uh, we truly get to see the impact yes. uh, that this community has here. So thank you for sharing that. And I appreciate all the metrics you share from the UDISC app as well. You're welcome. Um, I see none under old business, um, none under new business. Anything, any additions, anything else that we haven't discussed so far? One last time. Perfect. Um, I don't see any members of the public here to offer feedback. We encourage you to offer feedback through Facebook or, you know, uh, by reaching out to the town directly or any members of the Parks and Rec Department. Um, but with that, go with that being said, I 
we'll, I think we've wrapped up kind of a good portion of our agenda uh, with no active uh, things to discuss. Our next meeting is for March 12, 2024 at 6 p.m. at the Penfield Town Hall. Um, you all should have received kind of the meeting dates for the rest of this year. Uh, it's the second Tuesday of the month from 6 to 7 p.m. Except for summer months. Yes, except for July and August. <laughs> Um, cool. With no pending uh, discussions, no other updates, uh, I adjourned this meeting at 6.50 p.m. Um, on February 13th, and uh, I thank members of the Penfield Parks and Recreation Advisory Board for uh, this meeting. Thank you, everyone.